What's up guys? It's been a while since I've had a new Warbird to fly for you. So that means I'm happy. There, I lowered it. Look at that landing gear down. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hey everyone, I'm Nate. And I'm Abby. Amelia is taking a nap. Popeye's battening down the hatches. We're the RC sailors. Welcome to our RC family. You may have noticed by now we got a new little toy. Abby <laughs> and and this new toy so we're both happy today uh, getting to fly and try a new camera lens for you guys we're really trying to get this airplane thing down to a T to make these videos look great so what we expect from you guys is some feedback in the comments below do you like our old airplane videos or do you like this one keeping in mind that Abby is doing this is her first video with this lens so be nice but constructive Today we're gonna to fly the P39 Era Cobra. This is just a beautiful Warbird in my opinion. I do like that it has the front landing gear rather than a tail dragger. That's a really nice change of pace from my favorite P51 that I like to fly. One of the cool things about this plane in real life is that the engine is mounted behind the pilot's cockpit and it has a drive shaft driven up to the front of the plane to drive the spinner and the prop. I think that's really cool. There's a lot of really neat facts about this plane in real life. That would be fun. If you're a history buff and you like World War II like I do, it'd be a fun read. So I don't want to hit all that here today. Cutting to the point, why you guys click this video. This is a really nice, it's almost a four foot wingspan. It's like half an inch short of a four foot wingspan, six channel, a bind and fly with a spectrum transmitter receiver combo. Mine had the spectrum receiver in it. For about $270. We'll have a link in the description box below. Six channels means we have our throttle, rudder, and elevator, ailerons, there's four. We have split flaps, which are just beautiful. I'll show you hopefully a close shot of those. And then retract landing gear. And they work so great. So great. That's very nice. I don't have a servo set up to the drop tank, but I suppose you could set that up. The nice thing about it it slides off very easily, so if you don't like the looks of that, or you uh, just want to maybe change it up occasionally, you can, and it just kind of slides into place there on the bottom of the plane. Inside the canopy is uh, very, very spacious here. Abby, can you zoom in now? Oh yeah! It's nice and spacious in here, but the one complaint I do have is the battery compartment just isn't that flexible. For a larger plane, I would expect to have a larger space in there to use a variety of sizes of batteries. I'm gonna grab the battery that I highly, highly recommend because it's really the only size battery I have that works. This can fly on three to four S and it really needs to be about this size, okay? So I'm, uh, this is just a, one of the biggest three S airplane batteries I have that will fit in here. That's why I've got it. And then I, I really do like these smart batteries. Uh, we'll have these linked in the description box below because this is the battery that I highly recommend you fly in this plane. It's got an EC3 connector on it. It's a 4S 2200 milliamp LiPo. You need that extra power and I'll tell you why. I've actually already flown this. A lot of times I like to share the very first flight with you and maybe during some of my talking here I will include some of the B-roll because Abby did record it. Now the issue was I had the safe technology on. Now, granted, I like safe technology on the ready-to-fly planes. They're bada-bing, bada-boom, you're in the air and they work great. But with this bind and fly, I needed to do a little bit more programming in the transmitter, which I am somewhat unfamiliar with. And I just didn't even think about doing that. So because took, you fly tactic. I fly tactic forever, all the time. Forever. And I love tactic. So you're I, trying to do spectrum. I'm trying to broaden my horizons a little bit so I can teach you guys more about that stuff too. And what happened was my turns were so huge. My ailerons would only go like 10 or 15%. So I needed to adjust that stuff in the transmitter with safe flight on. And it just was a really rough flight, okay? When I got it on the ground, it was very easy to turn safe technology off. And I had a much prettier flight after that. So anyway, excuse the jump cuts. We're, we're playing around with the camera settings and stuff. Uh, well, I just want to fly this for you. Uh, very quickly, I always like to tell you guys how easy and fast it was to build and everything. I took my sweet time building this plane because I was texting our patrons during the build and it took me about 20 minutes. So it's extremely easy to build. Even if you have no build experience, I would drop my LiPo alarm. <laughs> Even if you have no build experience, although I would not say this is extremely beginner friendly. I think it needs to be at least your second plane, if not your third plane. And I highly recommend having a 4S 
uh, set up. It probably took me 20 minutes to get it bound and, and everything trimmed in the way I wanted it to be trimmed. But now I love it. I can't wait to share this flight with you. Let's go fly. Check out those flaps, you guys. And in the air, I'll do my best to do a low flyby when I pull up the retracts. Um, yeah, so I think half is great for taking off. Give it a lot of elevator. I'm just gonna taxi it out here and do a takeoff. See, with the P-51, it's hard for me to do a grass landing and takeoff here because we nose over a lot. But with this, I can actually taxi on grass. Even though it's a little bumpy looking, it's a nice smooth field. So here we go, Abby. There we go, up. And flaps are up. I will pull the landing gear up when I come around here. I need to step out there some, Abby, if that's okay. Oh yeah, you have a portable mic. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do the uh, landing gear here as we go by in three, two, one. And it's up. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so I won't be having a good conversation with Abby because she's over there now, but uh, just yell at me if you need me to fly any certain way, Abby. What a beautiful plane. And it took me, this is now my third flight on this, to get it zeroed in and flying exactly the way I wanted, wanted to fly. Boy, I hope that lens looks good for you guys. So what I try to do when I fly Warbirds is fly mostly scale. Especially this one, it's a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than those little Tower Hobbies P-51s I like to fly. And so I've got more range with it. It's taken a little bit wider of turns too. Woo, nice and close to the ground. Let's do a loop. I don't think I've done a loop yet with it. A little bit sloppy because we have a side breeze crosswind coming in here but I'm able to fly with this 4S pack at about half throttle when I do these little passes here. I'm flying about half throttle and it feels really good. And then I juice it on the climb. Let's come back down this way, flying in too much of a pattern here. Now on this 2200 milliamp LiPo, I'm tending to get about a four minute flight and I wish that were longer but that's a safe flight time for this. I'm already here in my alarm Abby so I can't stay in the air much longer. Uh, how's everything look back here? Fine. I'm going to do a vertical climb and boy it'll just climb all day won't it? Mm -hmm. Oh that's really nice. I like that a lot. So I'm going to do another pass here. See if we can hear that alarm. Might have just been because I was juicing it a little bit for those maneuvers. But this is a very nice Warbird. Very scale to, to my liking anyway. Ooh, beautiful. Now, what's that zoom look like? I'm very excited to see this video. It looks good. Cool. Oh, let's do a little bit inverted. I haven't done that. Oh, flies inverted. Great. Look at that. You still got me? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll try my best to keep it in the air upside down. It's not my favorite thing to do, especially with the Warbird. Uh oh, something happened there. I think I lost signal right out there. It locked up for about a half second, so that's not good. Well, I'm gonna lower the landing gear on my next pass so you guys can see that nice and close. And I think I'll come in for a landing. And we have some signal issues up here sometimes, don't we? Occasionally it'll just black out on us there. I lowered it. Look at that landing gear down. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. On the next pass, I'll lower the flaps down to the full length, and you guys should see from a distance if it jars or not. It shouldn't uh, from my previous flight. <laughs> and I'm a, little, I'm a little bit nervous flying this, let's be honest with you guys. Just a new plane, you know. I'll probably do a follow-up on it, and it'll fly a lot better. So I'm going to hit the flaps now. I got a little bit of lift when I went to full flaps, but boy, it slows the plane down a lot and creates a lot of lift. You can see how slow I'm flying now. And I'll just go and touch it down. Yeah, very happy with that. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that was beautiful. In my opinion, I think this was just a blast to fly. Very easy to put together. And this one is a very scale flying Warbird. I like it. I mean, if you, 
if, if you're like me and you love warbirds, then this is right up your alley. This is a plane that's going to stay in my collection for a long time, and I will continue to... What are you... What are you did you get my sandals? No, in the store. No, I was, what are you doing? You're just having fun with that zoom, aren't you? I know, I'm overdoing it. It's well, funny. This is a plane that I know for sure is going to stay in my collection very proudly, and it's a thing that I'll just bring to the field or club events or other events that I go to and just put in the air and have fun with. It's a little bit bigger, like I said, than my P-51 stuff. The only negative thing, and it's only the only hiccup it has at all because it was so easy to build, so easy to actually get in the air, and I recommend flying without the safe unless you know what you're doing and you can fine tune your safe flight. And uh, I'm sure I can do that, but I preferred flying without it. It's such a big, docile flyer. My only flaw at all is the uh, battery compartment. I think that you have to have the exact battery and I wish, I wish I could put like a 4,000 milliamp four cell lipo in there and get closer to a nine or 10 minute flight. With that little 2200 milliamp 4S battery, you're gonna have a very restricted flight time of about four to five minutes pushing it. So there's your, there's your big hiccup with this plain big thing that I, would, that I would change if I could. I'm gonna be in the market to try to find some more batteries that'll fit in here, but as of right now, this is the best battery that you can put in here to fly. And I'll have that linked in the description box below with this plane. Trust me, they're great batteries. I just wish I had a bigger one that would fit in here. I've tried, I tried seven different batteries that I have and they were all just slightly too big. I might even have to cut out the inside of that battery compartment some. But anyway, it was so much fun to fly, so beautiful. And as I said, I just want more flight time. That's, I think that's a good problem for these guys to have, right? Yeah. Right. Unless I just overfly this and crash it someday on my own, like flying inverted low to the ground because I'm having fun. I'll probably do a follow-up video on this later down the road, maybe toward the end of the summer and the fall time after I've got 50 to 100 flights on it. So stay tuned for that and all the other RC content that we bring you guys. You know, we do everything from trucks to drones to planes. I don't know, it's not often enough that we get planes out, but I've been having a good summer of planes so far. I'm really happy with this. This is a great warbird to add to my collection. I think my P-51 is still still my favorite over this. Uh, just in general, I love the P-51, how it looks. But I never really would have, uh, I never would have thought that this one would fly as good as it does. I, I was really happy with how this flew. And given the choice, I'd rather take off and land this plane than the P-51 any day. This was so much easier to take off and land. Okay, I, I could talk about this stuff all day long. Let us know what you guys thought about the camera work uh, that we had there, Abby and and maybe this lens will stay in our collection, but I know for sure the plane is. Guys, all the good stuff will be linked in the description box below. If you wanna support our channel directly, you can do it for free by subscribing, or you can step it up and get a few stickers for your RCs. Where are the stickers, Nate? You know, I wanted to fly, this one actually has quite a few decals already on it. We've got the eight ball and the pat and the shark teeth, but yes, some sailor stickers are gonna be going on those wings for sure. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next video.